Hey all, I'm Erin. I'm a developer experience engineer at LaunchDarkly, and today I'm going to show you all about our experimentation feature and how to make the most of it. So let's begin. One of the coolest things about LaunchDarkly is you can manage your releases, your experimentation, and your testing kind of all within one environment. So if you're wanting to test out the efficiency or the results of a new feature, whether it's running A-B tests or a funnel experiment, you can do that in the same exact platform that you're controlling your releases from. One added perk behind that is that when you have a successful test, you can automatically release that instead of having to go back to the drawing board, build it, create it, and that whole headache. It makes it very easy to immediately implement the results of an experiment or understand the, implement those best practices. So we're all gonna pretend that this is a little faux store we've crafted up. This is the Galaxy Marketplace. And e-commerce, I think, is a beautiful example to walk through when to use experimentation and testing. So in the Galaxy, at your store is at your fingertips. We'll see these shops. What we're gonna do is many times we've seen those like promotions when you're in a store, and we're gonna just add a little banner. And we want to test the efficiency of those banners within our environment. So does that actually improve our add to cart metric? We've already gone ahead and created the flag. So if you're familiar with launch darkly flags, that's what can happen. But what we're gonna do from here is let's try to see this first flag turn on. So let's build our first experiment. A couple of things that we'll need to get started. We'll need a flag and we'll need to set up some metrics. So I've already created a flag and for the sake of today, we're just gonna go ahead and turn that on. We're gonna go ahead, we'll see these featured store headers. And now that's gonna do is drive engagement within specific stores. So we're gonna go ahead click turning on and save changes. And now we'll see that final hours banner popped right up on top of that VR galaxy. Awesome, that's really great. So we've already turned on a few new feature automatically without redeploying or reshipping anything. It's just there, it happened. It's kind of the beauty of LaunchDarkly, turning it on just like a light switch or a toggle flip. But let's take it up a notch. Like We wanna know how much does it actually change the difference like is that final hours banner really that effective what we're going to do to build that out is we're going to navigate to experiments and we're going to set up an experiment on it so let's test it first off we're going to create an experiment we're going to call it uh the final hours banner then we'll have a come up with a hypothesis so remember a good hypothesis talks about what are the two things you're trying to impact so Kicking it back to like the third grade when we all learned about the scientific method, let's make a prediction. Um, I predict that the final hours banner increases the number, the number, uh, the likelihood instead of number, likelihood of someone adding an item to the cart. So great. We've walked through, we've set it up so that anytime that someone wants to click in and we add that cart, it's got that beautiful, we know that that final object is going to. So we're going to do that as a feature change. So comparing two options, like we want to see does that final options. We'll go over funnel options next, but this is what a feature change would look like. We'll then next determine the randomization unit and, and attributes. The beautiful part about LaunchDarkly is we bring in all that context that you already have within your flags right into the experimentation. You don't have to import it or set up another system or use that other tool. Or if you've been building something by hand, um, you don't have to manually go and find that information. We've already got it for you. So it makes it very easy within one platform. Additionally, once it's already set up from a flag perspective, you can run an experiment without ever even opening the code base. So you're getting that data. You don't even have to worry about opening up that code base or having someone who may be not a technical user jump into that. So go ahead, create that, add that randomization unit, and then any attribute that you would further like to see. So if they have a certain role, if you want to compare beta testers compared to non-beta testers, I think location is a really great uh, area to test. So does this work in one region or not another? These are kind of great times or reasons to test these types of experiments. We'll then click next. Now, you'll want to add a metric from here. So in LaunchDarkly, a metric is any time that we think of an event happening, we can assign an event to a metric, and which creates a metric event, which means that every time that this is happening, and every time an event is fired, it shows up as part of this metric, and we can contribute it to that metric. So we're going to go ahead, I've already gone ahead and set them up, but if I needed to create a metric, we can do so here 
and creating a name, setting up our metric key, we'd write a description of what it is, and we'd write like the event key that was created, or if you can even target it based on a CSS selector. So if you've got, you're targeting a certain button click that you can always set it up to tie it with that, or even a page view. So that's an amazing thing that you can bring in and be like, yep, if this viewer has inserted this page, one great use case of this is like, I love it for docs. So did someone actually read the docs? Like if we link a doc here, are people actually going to that page and navigating it? Which are all really great. Um, so there, we all use the, we're gonna go ahead and discard because I've already set up the metrics for today. Launch Darkly does use the evasion type statistics to calculate all these experiments. So there's some beauty in that and making sure that it really ties back to your product and we can see it really within the relation of the group. But for today, we want to, we're checking our hypothesis, making sure our metric lines up with that. We're adding an item. We're gonna go ahead and I want to see if they have added items. So I've clicked that item added metric. From here, we'll click flag variation. So on the flag variation state, what we're gonna do is I want to see Go ahead and find that flag nine that we had that features store headers and tying it right back to the one. So we wanna see variation one, it's going to have that header on, variation two is going to have that header off. Does it actually make a difference? Now setting that audience, one really great tip here is you can choose to set it to 100% of your audience or if you're like, I'm a little nervous about this change, you can choose to set it to just a small segment, or even if you have a context set up, you can target just a specific context at once. Again, bringing in those things that you love about LaunchDarkly, that targeting, that specificity, the one platform, all comes in handy when you're building for experimentation. And then, awesome. If we wanna say like, instead of the default, we're gonna go ahead and click finish. So our experiment is gonna build, awesome. Great, we did that very quickly. Now, I wanna go ahead and see what this looks like when started. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that experiment. So it's gonna say, awesome. We're running that experiment, things are going great. Now let's get some data and let's test to make sure that our experiment is working. As you'll notice here, my flag disappeared. So I'm no longer seeing that flag on top. So I'm probably being served a non-tracking variant. If you ever wanna see how your experiment is doing, you can do so by navigating to the live events page. So live events will tell you what's happening on your site. So you'll see that last flag back evaluation occurred 22, 21 seconds ago, since so about when I updated the site. I'm gonna start clicking in, we can start seeing where these flags are starting to happen. So I'm gonna start clicking in, you'll see, you can see the key that's coming in. I'm gonna click in buy now, I'm gonna buy some stuff, I'm gonna navigate to that shopping cart, I'm gonna pretend to check out, awesome. Cart. And we're seeing these items come up as I click through that page, which is super handy. It'll tell you in this live event view, it'll tell you a lot what's happening behind the scenes from we've seen 28 flags or evaluated 28 flags, we've seen two of them. We have gone through those four metrics. So we've seen us start to tick those metrics off the box, whether it's a flag or an adding to, or whether it's adding that cart metric or that checkout metric, we can start to see that happening and allows it to say, how are these broken down? Furthermore, you can see and dive into kind of explore what type of metrics are happening, the different keys that people are showing up. So are they a user? Where where are they clicking? Are they clicking the store header? Is it an attention call out? Uh, it'll even tell us like, you can see where we're getting those false evaluations. So it's telling us like, hey, we're only showing that false storefront. So that flag is off. Now, if we jump back to experiments, once we've done a certain period of time, we can go ahead and see, all right, how is this going? We can start to see our evaluation here. So a lot, this is very early stage here, so you're not seeing a lot just because we did it probably a few minutes ago, but you'd start to see this experiment traffic come in. So it does take a little bit to load, so you'll see some time here, but I'll pull up an older experiment so you can see what that looks like. Additionally, it'll tell you how many, how much traffic do you actually need to be the best of a certain percentage. So you can calculate it to see a certain amount. So if you're like, I want to be 90% certain or 80% certain to be the best of all these different variations, it'll tell you approximately how much traffic you need. So you'll need about 100 of each variation to get that accurate estimate. And depending on that, it'll take you, it'll also get guide you on how long you should run the experiment. But let's go ahead and see if we go to our experiments, we can see um, our archive experience here. 
and here's where we can start to see some more of that result. So it's in, this is one, it's got just, you'll see, just had that one result, it's come through. We're definitely seeing that that available toggle is about to be on, that has the highest conversion rate and gone from there. 